Then, five lunar orbiters photographed over 90% of the moon's surface, including the never-before-seen backside. We saw a glimpse, too, of our own planet from lunar distance. But most important of all, it made possible the selection of landing sites. Six surveyor spacecraft made soft landings on the moon over a two-year period. A robot arm dug a trench. Lunar soil was like wet sand. Men and equipment could safely land there. Panoramic views like these were assembled from hundreds of individual photographs. Communications via satellite exploded into a whole new industry. That first live intercontinental transmission by Telstar 1 was just the start. Relay, designed to transmit television, telephone, and high-speed data. Syncom, with Olympic coverage from Tokyo, and Early Bird 1, all were follow-ons to previous research and development. Because of the following special one-hour broadcast, programs previously scheduled at this time will not be seen. Since rendezvous, docking, and having astronauts work outside the spacecraft were critical to lunar missions, NASA began Project Gemini. Using the Mercury capsule as a model, the Gemini spacecraft was enlarged to hold a two-man crew. Gemini would provide design answers for the upcoming Project Apollo. And who could ever forget that spectacular first walk in space made by astronaut Ed White. astronauts flew into orbit, walking in space, rendezvousing and docking. Gemini had blazed a trail for Project Apollo, the three-man spacecraft that would carry astronauts to the moon. Eight years were poured into designing, building, testing, and preparing astronauts, rockets, and spacecraft for the first lunar landing. Here's a visual look back at some of that preparation.
1967, tragedy struck. The nation mourned the loss of the crew that would have flown the Apollo spacecraft on its maiden voyage. Astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee died in a flash fire as they were conducting pre-flight tests on the launch pad. The manned flight schedule was delayed 18 months as the command module underwent redesign. While these changes were being made, the parts and pieces needed to assemble the giant Saturn V moon rocket came together at the Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Everything associated with the Saturn V was huge. The rocket itself, the building where it was assembled, and the crawler transporter that carried it to the launch pad. The fully loaded Apollo Saturn V was 363 feet tall. Its main engines alone generated 160 million horsepower, and its fuel pumps pushed fuel to the engines with a force of 30 diesel locomotives. As Saturn V lifted off Launch Complex 39 for the first time, it weighed more than 2,800 tons. quickened. Starting with Apollo 8, every Saturn V launched had a three-man crew. days before Christmas in 1968, astronauts Borman, Lovell, and Anders became the first humans to pass out of Earth's gravitational control and into that of another body in the solar system, the moon. The hardware to travel to the moon had worked well, and landing sites looked good. Our Earth seemed small and fragile, hanging in the vastness of space. This view of ourselves from lunar distance would change the way we think about Earth for all time. It raised profound questions, especially those associated with the Earth's finiteness and unlimited resources. The next two flights, Apollos 9 and 10, would continue dress rehearsals for the first lunar landing. All systems were indeed ready. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins would make the historic journey. Next stop, Tranquility Base.